Hi there. Hi, MG. How's you? Right. Um, I know it says in the title, Boggy Found in Kingsport, and we'll be talking about that tonight. All right. But they haven't actually said who it is or whether it's, I've heard it's a male. That's all I've heard. I'm good, MG. Still got this stink out of a cold. I give up. I really do. So, but I'm also going to be looking and talking about putting a stop to all these. Oh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't think of the word I'm looking for now. It's like people are saying about Jay. Jay thing, isn't it? That lad who helps Steph. How he pulled, apparently, he pulled a gun. He didn't. I can pull up the video. It just seems to take me longer, like the MG, because of the treatment I had two years ago. A simple cold can knock me off my feet. Anyway, so, um, and I, I will show you that video tonight. And it would dispel all, that's it, rumours about that. And because of that, now, now, I've seen people on this one Facebook page digging into his um, background. For Christ's sake, to be honest with you, I couldn't see what purpose that protested. It wasn't as if they was out there with leaflets, flyers. You know what I mean? And has Seth said in the Pascal show last night, I believe, which we'll be looking at, what's he got to repent at for? Because at the moment, he's innocent until proven guilty. I really don't. Um, I wanted to say stay so neutral on this case. I really did. It gets, just gets so much harder every day. Every day. And then there's this thing, uh, video I'm going to be showing you as well, where Chris is talking to Trey from, um, what's the name? Look, I can't think of the, uh, the group he's in. He's a diver. He goes into the rivers and does dives and everything like that. Right? And it's interesting, but I will tell you now, if you've got earpieces or headphones, use them. Because it's not very loud yet, otherwise. Okay? It's not very loud at all. You hear it better if you've got headphones on. And then, what's the other rumour that's going around? This, there's a constant... Back and forth about the dogs. Did they pick up a scent? Did they not pick up a scent? Right? And we'll talk about that as well. And I can tell you now, I go by law enforcement. Right? I go by law enforcement. Even Seth has said the dog that picked up the scent was a false negative i don't know how they work work that i don't know how you can get a false negative to the negative or not you know what i mean how can you have a false negative so and then you still got people i swear to god i want to smack some of them <laughs> i don't really do Keep going on about when the law enforcement was searching 
là landfill in Kentucky. The landfill has got nothing in Kentucky. It's got nothing to do with domestic disp waste disposal. Right? Hang on. And it's still so annoying. And they go, but they did a search. And I'm going, well, really, she could have done a search in the landfill in Nashville. Right. I think I went to me earlier and ran. And I'm thinking, why haven't they done a search of the other landfill where the domestic waste was took? Now, they said it was because there was a tip off from the refuge men that their bin was heavier than normal. Now, that's what made everyone say, oh my God. He was putting a bean, disposed of in the bean, and it's been took to the landfill. No, no. If he was, they've searched the wrong landfill. Put it that way. They've searched the wrong flipping landfill. Because the one in Kentucky is... Hang on. I'm going to Kentucky. Is used for what purpose? Let's have a look. Right, but when I was reading it earlier, I can't get it now. Right, it was saying the one in Kentucky is where concrete is took, uh, garden waste is took. Right, and all that. So the reason they checked that is because the big bins, the big skips on the construction site, is where they take them. They take those big skips to Kentucky. Right? So please, if anyone wants to do some research on it, do the research on that because it's got nothing to do with the general waste of a home property. It's to do with concrete, uh, bricks, uh, metal, fridge, uh whatever all those big items all those big items i took there i don't live in the usa but i clicked and just typed in a few words and it come up for me so why are people still going on about that landfill in kentucky being searched by the police because the refuge men said their bins were a little bit heavier that day I, all they have to do with them refuge, with their bins anyway, is wheel them around, hook them into these little arms, and the arms automatically pick them up and empty, empty them. Christ, I know that. We have our refuge men do the same. Cut down. <laughs> they don't have to pick up no flipping bins. Oh, remember. When I was a toddler, they used to come up my back entry at my mum's house, come into the back garden and pick your bins up out your garden and carry them down to the entry and throw it in. And then put your bins back in your garden. Nowadays, you'll get, you'll be lucky if they took a, if they take all your rubbish. Anyway. So. <laughs> I'd just like to say thank you to everyone for being here on Twitter and on YouTube.
please don't sit in the don't feel you have to sit in the bushes come and say hello let us know what your opinions are how you feel about this so it's i've got it all on my what i want to watch on my facebook page so let's go let it go. Right, this is about. Remember, I spoke yesterday about how they're sabotaging the case. Right, the search, the sabotage in the search, and all the guys. And I'll jump. Oh God! And how a video was sent to, I believe it was Seth's mother. Now this is by Evil Exist. I will put his link in the description. But he's very good as well. He, he does do his research. He only does short videos. He don't do long videos. He does short videos, but he's precise and to the point. And I like either Alexis. I have to give it a lot. Right. So I'm going to show you this. It's only short. It's only what about two minutes, 27 seconds. Okay. So let's listen. Okay. You need to lose faith in the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, not just in Sebastian's case, but also in Summer's case. They can continue to say Summer's case is not cold, but no updates, no rests, no nothing, and going for three years. In my book, it's a cold case. We will continue to keep her case alive online, but as for authorities, I don't know what they're doing for her at this point. It's just frustrating. Sebastian went missing from his home, and his mother and stepfather decided to leave the last place he was seen at, and go camping. Who does that? I also heard that Sebastian's missing posters could not be seen on her car, or where they are currently staying. This behavior is highly alarming, considering that people who have never met Sebastian in their lives, are advocating for him, and raising awareness using missing posters on their cars, etc. Just alarming to say the least that his own mother is doing nothing to find him. What I'm about to share with you is so alarming and disturbing that I don't know what to say. Remember Seth Rogers, Sebastian's biological dad, said that someone was sabotaging his search for his son. Someone was also taking down the missing posters for Sebastian. I asked myself who would do such a horrible thing. This is an innocent missing child that needs to be found. Only a person who doesn't want Sebastian found would do such a thing. Well, I came across this video of Sebastian's grandmother saying that they have video of Chris tearing down the posters, saying that they will never find Sebastian. Take a look. Hey. Oh. Well, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. You too. Can I give you a hug, too? Absolutely. Is that okay? Absolutely, darling. Thank you. Thank you. We have been yes. walking and walking and walking. Been all the way around. Yeah. Oh. Good hole on that side, that other side of the lake. Huh. And went in all where the where the backwater is going. Yeah. Uh, Seth told us earlier and said that somebody had a video of Chris tearing down. Uh, tearing down somebody saying they're never going to find it. I, I tell you, it's listen, it's unlikely. Right, now, if that is true, right, whoever's got that video of Chris, they need to, if they haven't already, they need to hand it into the, I wouldn't even hand it into the law enforcement. I'd hand it into TBI. Because even though I don't, even though I got my feelings about TBI when it comes to very complex cases, 
I know. I'm I'm quite I'm quite sure the family have got no connections with TBI. Whereas rumor is I say to rumor, they don't repeat it, it's every rumor. That apparently Chris Proudfoot and his family have got connections with law enforcement. Now Dana, the next video will make you think about this. It will make you think very clearly. Right? Because there's something that is said in there and it just speaks that out. But as I said, you do need headphones because you won't hear it otherwise. I was trying to listen to it earlier and I couldn't hear it. So I had to go and get my headphones off charge because they're wireless. Right? I had to go and get them off my charger and put my headphones on to hear it. And before I go any further, if you haven't already, please hit that like button. It really does help with the is it analytics or whatever of YouTube. So please help me out. Hit that like button. So anyway, the other video is let's have a look. It's on my Facebook, isn't it? So we can get it at that. This one. Oh God. Now, it's literally at the beginning, right? And this is from the YouTuber Narked, Narked Divers, right? I showed you a video of them the other day in the this pond, this whatever, but it's just literally all mud, right? Searching. They was in there searching with Sebastian. Got any sign of him. So as I said, please put headphones on or earpieces in. You will hear it a lot better than without.
Did you hear that? That law enforcement took him in the car and drove him around the area. Now, has that got anything to do with the fact that he's got connections with the law enforcement? Or could it be to see what his reaction would be when they got in there? So either day, right, you could say, why is that, why are the enforcement telling him all this information and showing him all this information, but they're not showing or telling uh, Seth any information? For sake, Seth is the one out there looking. He's not. Seth is the father. He's not. So surely if anyone should be getting this information, it should be the father. Right? Sorry, I thought I'd put the video on. Right. We'll go back. Right, we're going to go back a bit. It's not long, really, this is him. Because there's something else I want you to hear. Just around about here, he talks about. Right? Well, the search dogs they had. And do, you, do you know how like how much they actually drain? They drain the whole thing. It's okay. So initially, when, it, when, it, when they went over to look at it, it was only knee deep. Um, from the picture that you showed me, there's a lot of new runoff. Yeah, that's what where they're cutting. Yeah. Trying to figure out. So, I was like, I don't know how shallow it was before or after. Yeah. I'm, I'm five foot nine, and it was deep. Okay. <laughs> so, and they, they even drained it and still walked it. Okay. So they actually walked it. I didn't know that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, and that is actually information that was told to me by law enforcement. Yeah. So they actually. Because I. No. Honestly, I'm tired of the BS and the rumors. That's what I, I kept trying to tell everybody. I was like, it's, you know, the kid, anyway, I said he left the house and then the internet went crazy with rumors and speculation. And I was like, I don't go off of rumors. I go off of the, what we got now. And I said something about that pond. And I said, and it just stopped. I said, so that's where I want to go. That's where I want to search and try to figure this out. So, then, so to work backwards from the pond, okay, if you were to walk from the go straight up into the construction site you'll see where they cut the road and it turns left if you walk that all the way back it runs into our subdivision okay if you go down kelly all the way down to stafford and walk down towards stafford and toward our house from our house I'm gonna, if you're looking at my house i'm going to tell you where the dog stand went they started on the front porch okay because off the front porch the dog cut to the right they go all the way down the side of the house along the fence. So they went to the back side. Or the back that right. to the north. To, if you're looking if you're looking at my house, okay. it's gonna be the right hand side. The dog goes all the way down the fence, the dog comes all the way back up into the yard, and then it cuts diagonally to the house next door to us through their back yard. And that and that is the direction which the dogs take off. Now after that that's where they get over to the green road, go up Kelly. Why are the law enforcement telling you all this information? 
that's my question. How's he? Are they telling me this information? Or people have said it's got like the one when he was doing that live with on Smiley's World, he had you could hear some talking in the background, it's like a radio. And they said he was at work at the time, so he was just on the radio, and people were just calling him into him. But people are saying it sounded like a police scanner. Which you can get onto your phone. You can add onto your phone. I didn't know that. Be interesting to find that out. But I'll wait till I get a new phone. <laughs> but why is he getting all this information? And not Seth? It doesn't. It doesn't make any pardon me, any sense to me. Head over to uh, the other subject. Okay. I know I mean, they've had dogs. I can't. I mean, how many? Yeah, a lot of dogs. The day one, there was five dogs. There was a Belgian Malinois. Uh. A do you that a Belgian Melanois or something? That's the same breed of dog that um hold on, I'll tell you. Uh I'm just trying to Oh God! That um, brothers underwater. Right, brothers underwater. Great. Right. So I just find that a bit, a bit too. Oh God. What's the word I'm looking for? Bit sus, a bit sus, right? And I'll tell you something as well. It's like he's watching all these YouTube channels. He's watching them all. He's watching North Divers. He's watching Brothers Underwater Recovery because he's dog, right? He's picking up on these breeds of dogs. Now, why are the police telling him what breed of dogs they've got? They don't need to tell him that. All they need to know, if they're going to tell him anything, they just need to go, well, they have sent dogs that are uh, cadaver dogs. They don't need to know the breed. So where's he getting all this information from? The only people I can say is law enforcement. But why is law enforcement giving him all this information and not Seth? And as far as Seth knows, he was told about the hit by a dog, not by three or more, by a dog, right? But it was a false positive or something like that. And that's something I want to look into. But that's what he was told. He said, and I know if he was told, he said, if I was told that, then Chris was told that as well. But Chris and Katie, even though they went on the uh, Nancy Grace show and she called them out on that because she had uh, someone on her panel and they said that the police have told them there were no dog scent anywhere around the house not just in the yard but anywhere around the house as soon as the dogs went through the garage and went outside they lost the scent so they had the scent of sebastian in the house but as soon as they went outside they lost it what is that being as sebastian apparently put the rubbish out the night before 
Would this set not be there? Sorry? Um, would this set not be from the front doorway to wherever he goes to get the school bus on the Friday morning? So would the dogs not have picked up a scent there? And when he comes home, what about when he gets off the school bus Monday to Friday or whatever and he comes home? Whether it pick, drops him right outside by his house or just down the road, I don't know. Right? But there would be a scent, but there's nothing. And that's what Nancy Grace couldn't understand, why there was no scent at all. They said normally a scent dog would pick up on several places. They pick up on where a child walks to the bus stop to school, where a child maybe goes to their local shop. They've got a local shop they go to, or to the park where they go. Places like that where they walk to. And they will pick up on all those things. Yeah. And then they kick them up. You know, that scent is for the bus stop. That one's for when we go to park. That one's for when he goes, we go to the shop. But they picked up on none. None of those scents. The police have said the dogs picked up on no scent. Now, are the police lying to us, holding information back? They could be. Right? They could be holding information back. But I they I just told uh, CP and KP this about the dogs picking up on a scent, or dogs picking up on a scent, just to see if they will carry on with that story. And they have. But like I said, I cannot understand how he's got all this information and Seth's got nothing. As Seth said, not part of the investigation. So they wouldn't tell him. I know with good dogs, like they'll do the track that's on the ground and then if they smell a stronger scent in the air that's closer, they'll go to that direct scent. So if all the dogs were tracking actually on the ground, then you know, I feel like this is when this is the point, like the spot to figure it out. Because if it would have if he would have cross track, like actually like headed back, they should have been able to pick up on it. Like a good dog. So in the eight days of the the experience in searching in the eight days, on day one the five dogs did that. Out of the eight days, three Three different dogs from three different groups um, went to that same area in that same scent on day one. So he sent dogs from three different groups on the same day. And two of those dogs did the same path. Okay. And I'm pretty sure that was the Bloodhound and, and the Luke. And it's probably a better dog. Yeah, those two were probably the yeah. better ones. Now, the guy, I mean, I can't remember this guy. I called him Michael, but I think his, they call him Michelle. Okay. He's French. Uh, he's out of North Carolina, I believe. He, he, he trains. He teaches, yeah, he trains trainers or trainer handlers. Yes. They brought his dogs out, and one of his dogs did that same path. From what I was told, that's, that's why I was like, well, there we go, folks. That's why, the, out of all the dogs, there was at least three consistent hits that did that. Right. And then what was the strongest pack? Yeah. The strongest, the strongest, most recent set. And there was a couple dogs, like one dog uh, went over to the long haul pipe and got there and he lost his scent. Right. The rest of the dogs all picked up scents, but then they go in all different directions and they lose. Well, thank I appreciate your information. And I'm Try to figure this out and keep on, just keep on working at it. If I get anything, I'll let you know. Yeah, the, uh, that guy I sent you uh, info. <coughs> okay. Uh, he's the EMA. Director from the town. Uh, he was the one, I guess, that was doing it. He was the one from the ground searching in the waterways and the caves and everything. Okay. Uh, he, I mean, he can't reach out to him. He just keeps the floor 
little tail as far as like the water. What's been covered? Yeah, in the caves and stuff. He'll probably even show you, maybe. I don't know, but I will reach out to him and he will give you the best uh, physical aspect of the sturdy that can take place. He's the one that was in charge of it. Okay. I can do that. Alright, man. Uh, if you need some. Yeah, I'll All give right. you a call. Oh, uh, okay. Right. Thank you very much. Alright. Thank you, sir. Just give me a good act. Um, so, out of all the dogs, three dogs picked up on the sink and went straight to that pond. Right? But the law enforcement, now that's what the law enforcement have told him. But law enforcement are telling the news reporters and all that, no scent anywhere around that house. So who do we believe? Hmm, let me think. That's a hard question. Who do I believe? I believe law enforcement, but I also believe law enforcement are playing a game with CP. I think perhaps they're wanting to see his reaction. Right? Because I know police, law enforcement and police do that. They tell you something just to see, and they watch your body language your eyes, what you do, how you move, all that. I know they can't give information out just to see how you look, how you look, how you look. But I'm sure if three dogs had picked up on a scent, now Seth was there that day, he was there at the house that day, why didn't they tell Seth? Right? Because I'm sh Seth is in law enforcement. So if anyone, if law enforcement are going to say anything to anyone, it'll be Seth. Because I is in law enforcement, so he knows when to keep shut. Right? When to talk and when not to talk. And B, Seth is his father. CP is only a Oh, God, I can't even say what I want to say. But you can imagine, if I could say what I wanted to say, the air would be blue. Anyway, so those two little videos, short videos, they said a lot to me. Right, they said a lot to me. I uh, don't know what it says to you. Now, we all know CP lies. We all know that. He lies. He's telling everyone he's done a, a polygraph. Then he goes on Nancy Grace and says he hasn't. Then Nancy Grace sets one up for him and he says, I told law enforcement I was doing this polygraph, but they said, not to do one because they have they want me to do one themselves and not to talk about Sebastian not to do any more lives not to do any more interviews to talk about Sebastian I cannot for one second believe law enforcement TBI or anyone else will tell someone not to do any more interviews to get that name and picture out there. I can't, I can't see that happening. So apparently law enforcement wanted to do a, the polygraph. Now, he could come back and say, oh, he's done a polygraph and he's passed. Because law enforcement won't tell us whether he's passed or not. 
But if he did one with Nancy, which is the same polygraph that, that does it with that law enforcement work with, right? Same sort of people they work with. But because it's a private one, it's done uh, that Nancy is paid for, he is obliged to tell them whether they have passed or not. Right? So, you know, Seth is supposed to be doing one on, what day will be on now, Tuesday? So sometime tomorrow. Right, because it's still early evening for you lot. Where it's getting on for quarter to nine here in the UK. So for a lot of you, it's still at early afternoon. So tomorrow morning sometime he's doing a polygraph. But people have said, He's on medication, so would you be able to take that polygraph? You know what I mean? So we don't know. But to be honest with you, I don't care about Seth doing one. Because they've got him on video. They've got him from the moment he clocked in to the moment he clocked out. They've got witnesses. They've got his commander. Everyone. Telling them where he was. Right? Now, he took a leave of absence where apparently CP said he lost his job or nearly lost his job over, the, over this case with Sebastian. Seth hasn't nearly lost his job over this case with Sebastian. Why is that? Because Seth isn't lying where Chris is lying right now people have pulled up information right with construction workers and what time they're allowed to start work and I know in the UK they're not allowed to start before 7 because you're lucky to start before 9am in, in the UK they're clocking at 7 they have a 2 hour Breakfast. <laughs> anyway, so I know in the UK they uh, they don't start till it's around about seven eight a.m. <coughs> you know, bearing in mind <coughs> this construction work is right next to a hospital, a children's hospital. So they're not wanting. Construction work starting at 5 30, 6 a.m. in the morning and waking these children up. You know what I mean? They want these children to stay asleep as long as possible, unless they've got to go for an operation or have some treatment. You know what I mean? They don't want them to wake up 5 30, 6 a.m. in the morning. They really don't. So, I pulled this info up about how they start work normally about seven. Now, in that one interview, Chris said he was working. He was up in the crane when KP phoned him because he said he has one earpiece for his works, right? And one earpiece for his phone, right? So, that meant he was working when she phoned him at what? Just gone six o'clock, five past six, ten past six in the morning. Because he said he phoned the police at twenty past six, round about twenty past six. But we all know, we've all heard that dispatch call. And we've all heard it say, come through about six, 38, 639 in the morning. That's literally 19 minutes later than what he said. As I said yesterday, I can forgive him five minutes either way, five minutes before, five minutes later, be it 10 past or quarter past or 25 past, but not 19 minutes. That's a long time. A long difference in time. 
So, and I know he had to get cover for his work, right? He can't just drop the crane and walk, climb down or whatever they do and leave. They had to get someone to cover for him. How long that took, I don't know. Now, say he didn't get, couldn't get covered till about, say, I don't know, this was, what, 20 past six, half six by now, till about, say, seven. Seven to eight, eight to nine, nine to ten. He should have been home by 10, 10.30 a.m. in the morning. He didn't get back to the house till 1 p.m. in the afternoon, 1 p.m. and later. It was after about 1 p.m., after 12 p.m. anyway. So why did it take him so long to get home? That's another question. Why? Why did it take so long to get someone to cover for him? And why did it take so long for him to get home? So, anyway... As I said, the rumours are the dogs. That's a big hurrah. Was there a dog thing? Was there not? We all heard it on the dispatch that one dog did pick up a scent. In fact, the dog actually dived into the water. Right? And we all heard that there was some soft footprints. As though, not soft, but some footprints as though there was running along the dirt right so what does that mean i don't know we can only believe what we hear right now that could have been the false positive perhaps the dog just got to be eager and jumped in the water you know what i mean oh water boom some dogs are like that uh -huh. But the footprints, it could have been from another child, perhaps someone who lives, like some of them houses are taking already. Perhaps some of their children will look that way, playing around there. You know what I mean? It could have been from their children. So, and if there's anything like me as a child, I never wore shoes when I was a child. Never. Only if I was out with my mum and dad. But when I was out with my friends, my shoes would come off. I'd carry them. I'd be carrying my shoes everywhere I went. So, it could be children from around there, playing around there, because that's... God, my grandson would love something like that. He'd be up there every day playing around there. You know what I mean? Um, those footprints could have come from any child. I will not necessarily say those Sebastians. But it just bothers me that law enforcement are telling CP all this information on the first day, but told Seth, the father, nothing. And bearing in mind, Seth was there, well, he got the message about 20 past seven. So by the time he spoke to Chris, you're looking like half seven, 25 past seven, half seven. So he said he got to the house about quarter past eight, 10 past eight, quarter past eight. So he'd been there since quarter past eight, right? Chris didn't turn up till the afternoon. So why are the police giving him all this information? But Seth, who's been there since quarter past eight that morning, was told nothing, zilch, zero, nothing. So that's what I'd like to know. So anyway, I've come across Pascal's show. Right. And 
let's just give it that. I think I've got it on my Facebook page. Now, I will fast forward it to the point where CP, uh, Seth comes into the chat because Seth phones, phones him up. Right? Just drop this a minute. Right back. Well, so I'm just trying to get it to it. Oh, I'm not myself. So, a big shout out to the Pascal show again. Link is in the description. Please go over. Subscribe to him, it doesn't cost you anything. Right? <coughs> but he's really good as well. So we're just going to get this up for you. <coughs> right, this cup is doing my heading. Right. Right, we'll start here, okay, because this is where he's on the phone. You know, I have, you know, you, you know, I have nothing but love for you. And I, I you know, of course, I, I'm, I'm supporting you 110 percent. And, you know, my my prayers go out to you and your family and all that. Um, and I can only imagine what you're going through as far as. You know, as soon as to you know a a uh or nancy grace or any other platforms uh it's the it's the bombardment of questions it, it, it's it's interesting because nobody's getting into it. everybody you know humans are inquisitive i got got i got change blessings do you know if they asked an neighbor to watch the house i don't but I've got a sneaky suspicion maybe his mom and his stepdad, stepfather are. Because they was the one who pulled up on the drive that day when JLR drove past. And as JLR drove past, he went to the end of the road and went up then, took a left up that one road. And come back down and as he's come back down they started following him and they stopped and took um a photo of his car but i think they would have took the dogs with them if that's what you hope you're wrong about so i hope they took the dogs with them you know what i mean otherwise you could have them for cruelty Um, and anyway, we're going to watch this from Pascal so and let's listen to what Seth has to say on here. We want yes. to ask questions and we can get answers. Yep, yep. And then as soon as you answer a piece, it opens up another can of worms. And, want another one. <laughs> and then it's like, but what does that that mean? And then, but what does that mean too? And and then it keeps going and going and going. So I, I do want to say to you that uh, I just appreciate. I mean, let's be real. It, it, it's been like peeling an, an onion. You know, it's been peeling layers of an onion. And time goes on. There's more information that comes out. Uh, and, and, and unfortunately, you're the only one that's actually putting out the if there were three of you all, if there were two more people with you, I think that faster. Uh, but then I do appreciate you just putting the information out there. You know, whether it's messy or whether it's not, I, I, I just appreciate you just saying what people, I, what I feel people need to know. 
about Sebastian and what has happened. What do you mean by what has happened in this past? No, I mean, the information you said that, you know, you came on the show, you clarified a whole bunch of things with things that were told about when he won. You see what I'm saying? That I, I think opens up, makes the, makes, you know, the situation a little bit more three-dimensional, right? It gives it a little bit more of a, Thank you, Dr. Chang. That's true. Have they produced the clothing that he was wearing the night before when he was at the Texas Roadhouse? Right? Because she said, when someone questioned her, how do you know he was wearing what you said he was wearing? And she said, well, when we went through his clothing, those two items were missing. Yeah. Well, that is what he wore to bed. She said, that is what was missing was his black tracksuit bottoms and a black sweatshirt top, long sleeve top. So, and also, you know, there's a bit of confusion about whether he's wearing a sweatshirt and tracksuit bottoms. In the dispatch call, you hear him say, he's, the mother has said he was wearing black tracksuit bottoms with a stripe down the side and a long-sleeved black sweatshirt top, sweatshirt top. Nothing about a hoodie. So she was right when she said, that's what I told them. So who told us that he was wearing a black hoodie? Who first put it out that he was wearing a black hoodie? 
right? Because she said it had some sort of logo on. And in the dispatch call, it says it had some, it said something about a logo being on the front of the top. So who's telling what say, who's telling them the truth here? Well, we know she's telling the truth now because we heard it in the dispatch call. So who first put out that he was wearing a black hoodie? And not a so people are now saying, have has she given the police the clothing he was wearing the night before? Actually, messaging TBI now. Good one. <laughs> Yeah, because we've never heard anything about those clothing. No, I think he ought to make out his CP. Seth ought to make himself out to be CP because then law enforcement will tell him what they want him to know. Because they're telling CP everything. But I'm not telling Seth.
Well, to be honest with you, when we seen that uh, the police law enforcement press release the other week, he turned around and said, every day they just wait on that one tip that will come through that will break this case. So all they're telling us, they've got nothing on this. Because God, if if it's true that the dogs didn't pick up on any scent from him, then that sends a lot to me. Like criminal, they say that there's no criminal case, no criminal element or anything like that. Right? Well, if he did walk out that door, right? thinking he was just going to see someone for a few minutes and then come back in. But then ended up being kidnapped. That's being took away by force or something like that. That's a criminal element. Right? The fact there's no scent of that child around that house. Now, someone was standing the other day on Facebook page I'm on. No, there was no scent of him in the yard. No. There was no scent of him around the house at all. Why? He never got back to me on that. So, anyway, so um, to me, that throws up a red flag because how did he leave that house then if he's not left any scent? You know what I mean? You walk out your house, you're leaving your body scent from your shoes, your your coat, your arms, your, anything you're wearing can leave a scent. Christ, you shake hair daily. You shake hair. That leaves a scent. So just walk to get the bus every morning the school bus every morning would leave a scent but apparently they picked up no scent well they did say you heard them say that some dogs went off in this direction some dogs went off on that direction perhaps they were picking up on a scent where we caught the bus or whatever you know what i mean with leg to nothing what the dogs were picking up on leg to nothing So, let's continue.
and the card comes. Yeah. I'm sorry, you don't hear him. I've got my vol volumes all up. I'll see if I can put CP. Uh... No. Um... Is anyone else having trouble hearing, please? Because I'm not on mute and I've got my volume as high as I can get it. So I don't know what else I can do. Hold on. Yeah, I've got 100. So I don't know what else I can do. Oh, Let me know if you don't hear him still. Got change. But it's all up there. You might need to use headphones or earpieces. Right, we're just going to skip this bit. This isn't phone to someone. It says not from behind the house either. So it's got to be from the front. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that when I first seen it.
Yeah. I said when I first seen that, I thought, hold on, that camera angle is pretty high. You know what I mean? To be from the back of the house, if it's that from one of the days, then it wouldn't be that, the angle wouldn't have been that high. First time when I saw it, but what that light on the bottom right, was it left or left hand corner that come into view near the sort of thing that puzzled me and I thought that isn't a house light that is not a house light and you could actually see someone before that whole image coming to view on the bottom left hand side of that corner of that picture if you go back when i first viewed that footage i was going oh my god there's some walking because it looked like someone was walking by that by that object then all of the it just lit up the whole thing just lit up Can you hear me? I've got to change. You know what I can't understand? 
Why the Right, don't release that full video because if you in the copy, how's that going to affect the case? And why can't you the video of Sebastian walking out the Texas Roadhouse with his mum? How's that going to affect the case? I don't, I don't understand why they did it with. Um, that other lad who went missing, they steps all the way down this one road. They even had him on video falling over and bashing his head. I'm gonna have any pills. You can't hear. It turned the volumes on. I've got more volume up as loud as I can. Um, I don't know. Hold on. I'm going to try some. I'm going to turn my mic, my headphones off. By me and it's not muted on there. So, right, I'm going to turn it back on, right? Tell me if you can hear it now, then I'll turn it back on. Can you hear it now? I've just stopped it, but could you hear it then? Because I've took my headphones off. It isn't very loud, that's why I had it on my headphones on, because it wasn't that loud. I think it's more his end than mine. But it's not muted on his end, as you can see here. It's not mute. And the volume is up on his eye. So, right, well, if you, if you can't hear it, it's pointless playing it. Right, so I'll tell you what happened. Um, he came through. Can you still hear me, though? Can you hear me now? Right, because um, he talked about Jaden, the lad that's been 
how can you literally from the second week of Sebastian going missing and I am going to pull that interview up. I'll stop this because if you can't hear it, then it's pointless playing it. You know what I mean? Oh, Can you hear it now? Because I think I know what it was. But anyway, I'm going to pull up this video of JLR and it was on the back that guy doing a protest. Um, when Jay then comes into it, right? Um, where is he? Yeah. But I'm got got a thinking, and I'm going to say from where. I'm just going to come into it. I'll go here. And then I can share it. I hope you can hear this now. Because I don't know what it is if you can't. Because This is the we paint. It's got like a little arrow. Okay. And you're just walking up now towards Jaden. Hold on. Okay. Put this down. What does this do? How many days are we on? 40 something around 30 twice. I just want to know. The entire area. Correct. So we're going out past 840 now. Let me get up here so I can be eye level with you, sir. Okay. I'm not going to share that information. Okay, that's, that's fair enough. So the reason we're asking uh, Chris Buffett to repent is because he has a lot of Twitter. I've been following it. You know what I mean? So you think he's innocent, you think he's guilty, you think there's a play, you think he's wandered off. I'm just asking your opinion. So what, what do you mean by expertise? You have to be law enforcement to form a conclusion that somebody's not wrong. So we have watched Mr. Proudfoot incessantly by changing Okay. I have, let me just tell you what I have with okay, you see the little standoff? She don't have to be, man. I deal with this all the time. I've been this for five years. I don't feel like that. Okay, it's coming at this question of biblical perspective, right? Are you a Christian? Yes, sir. Are you a Bible? Yes, sir. What does the Bible say about people who lie? I just want to know what this is doing with that. Well, let's stay on target, man. I, I'm trying to explain what this is saying about people who lie. I'm a Christian, I'm a man of God, I go out and I preach the word of God, so right here in the book of but you're asking me why I'm doing this, and why this is helping find Sebastian, I'm trying to tell you why. Why are you wanting to repent of this problem? And, okay, again, I'm going to go back to my question. You said you're a Christian. I don't want to answer questions about Chris Ralford has lied, okay, and the Bible, I'll tell you what the Bible says in Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. That all liars will find their place in the That makes the second death. As a Christian, that is, if you tell me, look, 
Now, Chris Crowfoot reports that he's a Christian, but he's lying. Somebody is not telling the truth. When you change so we're out here with 40 days. Let me finish my statement so you can ask your next question. that saw Sebastian alive, supposedly it was Katie Crowd for this or that. I, I would have the answer because there is not a trace of anything. So we're out here and the different angle is that you can't leave any stone first. And even Chris Crawford himself said everything is on the table. Nothing can be ruled out. That was with direct questions from Nancy Grace and other interviewers. They directly asked her, the crowd, you know what happens. It's not an easy to know answer. That's something I just. That I got kicked off, but I'll put it back on again. But it's just literally finished then, right? As right, it's just literally as I got kicked out of Streamyard. Very good at doing that. Um. That, into, that that guy and the other guy finished talking. Now, not once during that talk, interview, whatever, was a gun pulled out. Not once. Whether he was carrying one in the back of his truck, jeans is another question. But apparently, in the USA, everyone has the right to carry a gun. We don't have that in the UK, thank God. There'd be bloodshed everywhere in the UK, I swear to God there would be. But uh, no gun was pulled out, no gun was shown. He just wanted to know what this protest was going to be doing. What good was it going to do? Now, as Seth says in that interview with Pascal, he stuck up for Jaden. And I would stick up for Jaden. Right? And JLR should have known it was Jaden. Because he's seen Jaden before. But um, Seth Day himself, in that interview on the Pascal, on that phone call, that that protest didn't help, did not help one bit in finding Sebastian. Right? Well, not hear about C 
CP. He don't care about him. His time will come. Now, why they do out there walking about with that banner, they're sending out flyers as well for Sebastian, for Sebastian, then for heaven up. But they didn't. They didn't hang out, no flyers, nothing. So that protest had nothing to do with Sebastian. It had everything to do with the CP, but nothing to do with Sebastian. So it wasn't helping the search for Sebastian. And that's all Jaden wanted to know, was how is this helping Sebastian? It wasn't. It's helping this guy here on the screen get clicks and views. You know what I mean? And that's what I don't like. It's like I've said it before. So many people put titles up. Body fame. Blah, blah, blah. And I've clicked on it. And it's got nothing to do with anything. Now, I've mentioned in my title, Body Found in Kingsport. Now, we'll, I'm going to discuss that. Because there was a body found in Kingsport on Sunday. Right? And, um, bear in mind, there was three young girls missing in Kingsport. There was Summer Wells two other young girls right and two other young girls and they've all been missing some of Wales has been missing what three years and the other two have been missing since I think last year sometime but also in that area it's got a lot of um homeless people And it, from what I understand, it wasn't found while on a search for Sebastian. It was found for some other reasons. It was found in, either inside the house or in the gardens of an empty house. Right? So obviously, think of being a homeless person. who just died. You know what I mean? And because the house was empty, or whatever, or no one was going to the house, no one found the body. No one found it. Until now. So, but the police, law enforcement, didn't say anything to say about this, about this body being found. And when I can pull up the information on this, I'll go. Right, see what's there. Straight away. Straight away. Human remains found on property in Kingsport. It doesn't say body found. Human remains. Now, if it is being a body, they can probably say body of a young woman, body of a woman found, or whatever, or body of a man found, or body of a young child, male, young child found. But it didn't, it said human remains found. That means it's bones, it's skeleton. Right? There. Human remains found on property in Kingsport. Kingsport, Kingsport, Tennessee, office reports human remains were found on a property in Kingsport Sunday afternoon. A news release from the SCSO Monday located in the Kingsport area of the county. No approximate location or street name was provided. 
to release said the remains were infested on site by SCSO investigators and we from the William Al Jenkins Forensic Center, Forensic Center for Identification. Now that says to me, it was bones, it was a skeleton. Right? Because if it was a body, would it not be transported to the coroner's office? You know what I mean? But because it was skeletal, because it was just the skeletal bones, it's been transported to uh, sent to the forensic centre for for evaluation and identification. Now, I know Sebastian's been missing for three days now. But he wouldn't have got to the point where they wouldn't recognise him or be able to recognise him as a male or a female. You see, they couldn't even tell when they first found it whether it was male or female. Now, if it was a body, you'd know that's a male body, that's a female body. But it wasn't. I'd say, all right, remains. Human remains. So it wasn't a, it's, yes, it's a body, but a body as male or female. Right? You could probably tell whether it was a child or an adult. But it's the size of the, but then again, it's hard to say. You get the, Remain put on a table. But whoever it was, that person has a family. Has a mother somewhere, a father, or a grandfather. Right? Whether he's homeless or not, or. Because homeless people do go missing all the time because they're not reported missing. Because they lose contact with their family, right? Family don't report them as missing. Now, I was talking to a gentleman, was it yesterday? And I walked past him first because I was going down to my shop. And then I walked back and I seen him struggling to get up. And I just said, are you okay? And normally when I say things like that, I say, yeah, I'm fine, thank you. He said, no. And I was took back by that. I went, she needs some help. And that when he went into, he said, I'm homeless. I'm like, and I felt so bad for him. And then he went on to tell me about his wife dying of cancer. And because the property was in his wife's name, not his, in his wife's name, he lost the property and he was put in what they call in Scotland what they call a network flat. It's a place for it's like a flat, like every other flat. Right? But it's only you're only there for a short time or until they can get you into a permanent permanent place. And I said, so where's this flat you're living in? And you, he told me, I said, oh, so you just need to get the, the 28 bus? He said, yes. So he said, but I haven't got the bus fare. I said, straight away, got the bus fare out for you. I said, there's the bus fare, get yourself a single and get yourself back to where you live. He had shopping. I suppose it looked like, I don't know why he'd come all the way up here. Because I know where he lives, so they've got shops up there, local to him. You know what I mean? They've got lots of shops up that way. So why come all the way over the other side of the town? I don't know. But he obviously being bought his shopping and not saved enough money to get back home. And I think he was just taking a rest before going on to walk back home. 
and you had your dog with him and I felt so bad for him but I, I saw he got on the bus I saw him get on the bus so I you know, didn't just take the money and wait he did get on the bus and it's just a shame because he's got no one you know this gentleman could go back to his flat he's passed away and no one would know no one would know you know what i mean because he's got no family nothing so no one's going to be there to check on him to see how he is and so many where I live, living rough on the streets. And people don't know who they are from Adam and, Adam and Eve, you know what I mean? They don't. But this is what I'm saying. This could be a homeless man that's just died through a died of hypothermia. Perhaps during the winter, it goes really cold in Kingsport. I don't know. But you could have died of that. You could have been someone I'm using a user and you could have overdosed. So, but it definitely isn't Sebastian. So, I'm not gonna lie, it's like 20, something like 20 miles away from where he's last you known. So, but that's, I'm just putting a stop to any rumour about this being Sebastian. It hasn't come out about who it is. It says human remains. Now, I'm sure with Sebastian, someone said, oh, yeah, it'd be human remains by now. But would it? Because I was reading up on it and it says it all depends on how the weather and the humidity and all that lot. Has it been really hot? Has it been really wet? Like the hotter it is, the faster I, I think they said they decompose. Right? But the cooler it is, the slower it de the body decomposes. while I keep the bodies in big flipping freezers and decomposing but yeah so the hotter the weather the faster the body will decompose but the cold cooler the weather the slower the body decomposes plus it depends on the size of the person how healthy the person is as well so a fairly healthy young black it's going to take a, a lot longer to decompose. Yes, it have some decomp decomposition by now, but not full decomp decomposition. So if that came back as Sebastian, I would be gobsmacked. But I don't think it is. So I hope no one is going to go around saying, oh, Sebastian, Sebastian's been found. Because we don't know yet. Even Seth hasn't been told. And I think if it was, had anything to do with Sebastian, I think they would have told him by now, look, we think we may have found Sebastian. Do you know what I mean? But they haven't. And this was somebody you now, what, Tuesday? Tuesday? Yeah. Is it? I don't know. Can't remember what day is it. Can't remember if it's Monday or Tuesday. Tuesday. It's Tuesday. That's it. Tuesday. So that's something else. I just want to put a stop to now before anyone thinks of going around on Facebook pages saying, "Oh, Sebastian, Sebastian, it isn't. It hasn't been confirmed to Sebastian, and I highly doubt it is because it says human remains found." He wouldn't be completely, um, you know what I mean? 
Christ, look her farming in Montgomery, what her dad did to her. She was only a little girl. But for weeks, months, he kept her in a bag, in a loft, in a cupboard, in a freezer, in the boot of a car. He kept her everywhere. It was different temperatures wherever she was. You know, her body didn't decompose that quick. So, so that thing about the gun being pulled at that protest is did not happen. Did not happen. Right? Uh, the body, it is, uh, as I keep saying, I highly doubt it is Sebastian. Now, I've got it pinned in the comments, and it is in the description. I've got the link to the Cash App for Seth. And if you, if you want to help, you can either help by sending them through Cash App, or if you haven't got Cash App, then please the GoFundMe link is there. Please go and support him that way. He's not being at work at all since this happened. So for what forty-three days now, he's not being work. Um, he won't go to work until the police say, "Look, this is a cold case now. We've got no evidence." Or until the body is found. So. Well, and something else I want to mention. Now, I am not by any means sticking up for CP or KP. Right? Because, right, I can't believe I'm saying this as well. They are innocent until proven guilty. Right? I know their actions are proving a lot to be desired. But perhaps she's gone back down to that caravan park because of the nuisance. Because there has been some people driving around where she lived, right, honking the cars and all this lot, and annoying neighbours. Right, which wouldn't help, none of that help, and now they followed them down to wherever they are and they're doing the same down there. It's not helping now. As I said last night, someone posted that they drive past that site daily, they live down there, they drive past it daily. Now, they said the cars are still there, in fact, the cars are not moved right well it might be because there was, it was a weekend there wasn't going anywhere he wasn't working they're just sitting in the car you know what i mean but there have been rumors uh well not rumors complaints where the police being called in and whatever of people going around shouting out their car windows Abuse at them and everything. Now, have you ever thought some parents are told Seth isn't even said this, right? Not to get involved with the search because if they do find that child, Seth has even said this himself. He's going to be so hard for him if he sees Sebastian to not just go and grab him and hold him. You know what I mean? But he can't do that. And that's why they don't like parents on the search. However, it doesn't stop them from going out and putting flyers out. They don't have to go on the search. They can put flyers out. But they don't do none of that. So the behaviour is a lot to be desired. And the way they do their interviews, He's just very controlling. 
I think she's on some sort of medication. I really do because she's seen no dad in all her interviews. Apart from that first, very first interview she did with the news reel, right? Where she was shaking and rocking back and forth and everything. There's still a little thing about that interview I picked up on. And that was that little smirk she gave. Right near the beginning of the interview. Dupers. Dupers delight. Now that says a lot to me. What is she smirking for? And she turned her head and she dung it. And she had a tissue up at her nose, at her, on her face. So it's like she thought the tissue's hiding it. So ding it caught that smirk, that little bit of a smile she gave. And, but, people have been saying they've not been helping in the search. I agree, they haven't been helping in the search. But the police have probably told them not to help in the searches. But as I said, there's nothing stopping them from going around the streets, pounding the streets, putting flies through the doors, putting flies on posts, and wherever they put a flyer. There's nothing stopping them from doing that. But they're having. So, because of that, I think she's getting a bit of hassle at the house. So, I can understand. And perhaps the police have said, for your best, go down to your baby Chris and in your five wheeler. But people have tracked them down. So, I think they need to back off. Let the police do what they need to do. Because someone said, because their cars haven't moved, how do we know they're actually in there? They've got all the blinds shut. The cars have not moved. They're in the same spot. Uh -huh. And now uh, this was on a Monday. Now he's should have been at work, so his cars shouldn't have even been there. Right? So what's saying someone didn't come and pick him up on the night time, it's gone dark, and took him somewhere else. Now if that's the case, was it the police who'd moved him? And they've left the car there to give people the impression that they are there. So could law enforcement have moved them and put them in somewhere safe? Or could it be family? Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if it was family that came down and moved them, took them somewhere else. Maybe even brought them back to their house. You know what I mean? But you can't keep it, people cannot keep harassing them. There is a reason why they're not on the searches. Seth has said it himself, but it's not going to stop Seth. It will not stop Seth from searching. This is his son. He feels as though he's let his son down already. This is his way of making it up to his son to go out there and find him. But he can he understands why the police don't want him there. But there's other ways they can help. But they haven't. So to me. Someone said, you only, you only look for someone who's missing. If you don't look, then they're not missing. Because they know where that person is. They know where he is. You don't know if he's with, whether he's been on the line. But I think it's just my gut feeling. That someone has him somewhere. And that's why. And I, I showed last night on a live a map of all the institutions for autism, all the schools and institutions for children with autism. And there's two literally right on their doorstep in Mississippi. And there's others all about random. 
how do we know they've not put them to somewhere like that? If they have, then who's wherever he is, he's breaking the law because Seth has not authorised it and they need signatures from both the mother, by her mother and by her father. So if they have put him into an institution, then that is kidnapping. But he's got his private investigators onto this, so we'll see if we find out what comes from that. Right? Give him a few more weeks. Then someone can say, what's happened about these institutions? Has anything come up about any institutions? If Sebastian meaning anything? Because I'm sure if he is, then Seth will find him. So I just got this sneaky thing feeling and some a lot of people have said why would you leave your home you said in the first interview the door is always open well it's not it's shut right um but he has he does know the lock the pin code for the front door so he could get himself in the house he knows the pin code for the door I don't have a pin code on my front door. I'll be locked out of my house. I need to get in. I can never remember it. I'd have to have it on my phone or something. And have to keep pulling it up every time. Hi, Truth Seeker. So, um, good to see you in here. I was playing a video by Pascal, but everyone was saying they couldn't hear it, so I just stopped playing it. But as I said, he just dismissed, he just dismissed all the rumours about Jaden with the gun. There was no gun involved. He didn't get a gun out. Whether he had a gun on him at the time in his back pocket, I don't know. Right? But because of this, that, someone said they saw a gun, they phoned the police. And the police were out there looking for him. And all Jaden wanted to know was how, how was that protest helping Sebastian? Because it wasn't. It wasn't helping Sebastian. It's it was more for Chris. God, we don't want to do that. His ego, his ego is big enough already. Please don't give his ego any more make it even bigger because he wants all the attention on him is that me 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 sort of person it's all me he don't care about sebastian so let's forget about cp let's forget about kp where they are i don't care my feelings are for sebastian and always have been right and I will always support Seth and the searchers. And if anyone attacks Seth or any of the searchers, then God help them because I'm going to rip them to bits. Because I don't like the fact that they said the gun was pulled out. And walking up to him with a gun in his hand. He didn't come walking up to him. He was on the bank. And this guy with the banger came up the bank to him. As you see in the video, I should show you. And he did not pull a gun out. As I said, I don't know if he had one in his back of his belt. I can see that part. But someone said they saw a gun. So they phoned the police. But everyone's got the right to bear arms in the USA. <laughs> that is, uh, because if he pulled the gun on him, then fair enough, you phone the police. But he didn't pull the gun, so why phone the police? And then you've got people say, but if that's Jason who's been helping with the searches, why is he trying to hinder the search? Because it wasn't a search. That was a protest about CP. It wasn't a search for Sebastian. There wasn't no flyers handy guys. Nothing. It was all about CP. And that bloke who's on his 
YouTube channel or whatever he was on, filming it all was just there doing it for clicks and views. Right? And I mentioned last night again, how people are calling YouTube a tra uh, tragedy, tragedy pimps. You know, I'm sorry. Someone coming here the other night and said, Fake channel, bye, so I went, I'll help you. Clicked it and blocked him. That person was not get back on this channel. If they think it's a fake channel, then they don't need to come back here. Right? And if anyone ever come in here and call me a tragedy to be, God help you. I'll rip you to bits because I'm not monetized. I don't get paid for this. This is my own time. Pay for it all out my own money. I ain't paying nothing. I haven't even got my PayPal. I haven't even got a cash app account. I've got a PayPal. <coughs> but it's linked to another page on Google. Right? So, <coughs> I haven't even got a PayPal account for this. So, anyway, I just wanted to come on and dismiss some of the rumours that was going around about this case, about Sebastian. And, and point out a few more lies. Right? Now, at the beginning, why is CP being told all that information by law enforcement about the dogs and about the search? He didn't get there till late afternoon. So why didn't the law enforcement let Seth know all this? So, as people say, could it be because he's got con contacts in the law enforcement? I think it's to see they're just giving him some false information. I'm really sorry, Kai. I'm, I'm doing everything I can about the uh, audio. I've got, I'm full. I'm not muted. It could be the internet, because my internet is playing up at the moment. So I'm really, really sorry. Someone else said in the comment, the audio, and I'm going, but I don't know what it is. Right? I don't know what, what it is. I could understand if I was on mute, which I do do sometimes. And I forget, but I'm not on mute, and my volume up is loud, loud as I can get it. So I'm really sorry. It could be my accent as well, and the fact that I've got a cold is helping. And I've had this cold two weeks now. Over two weeks, and I just can't believe me. So I'm really, really sorry about this. I will look into it, see what I can do. But I don't know what else I can do. Right? But anyway, I just wanted to put an end to all these stupid rumours that are going about. And to just show you how... Law, is law enforcement lying to the general public and the news people? Or are they lying to CP? Is all that information they told him just to see if he will run with that information? I don't know. Oh, I've just realised. StreamYard have altered their layout. So when I finish this live, I'm going to check something. See if that is messing with the audio or anything. But there's nothing I can see here messing. So 
Anyway, I'm sorry about the audio. I really am. I will look into it. And I don't know why you couldn't hear that video earlier. I really don't. It wasn't music. But thank you for being here with me. Thank you, Truth Seeker, for the fear. And for you, Kyle, for coming in and telling me about the audio. And for Terry, and got a change, seeing everyone else. And everyone on. Heck. Thank you for being here with me. So, please, if you want X, show me some love. Hit that little heart. Leave me a comment. I'll do get back to all comments. If any comments are left on my Twitter account, I'll do get back to them. If you're on YouTube, hit that like button. Right, really does help. So please, hit the like. Subscri Subscribing is free. You do not charge. Does not charge you to subscribe. And I've seen people coming in Facebook pages say they've got information to give out, which isn't rumour, which is fact. But they're getting, you have to pay for like five or ten dollars to do a super chat to get your question put out. Because if you put it in a chat, not reading your question, you the information out, they're not reading it out. No, I don't believe in that. I think everyone who's got a question should be able to put it in the comments and it should be read out. You shouldn't have to pay. So, anyway, once again, I just want to thank everyone for being here tonight with me. And uh, hopefully tomorrow I'll, I'll have to check on Green Yard about the audio. And hopefully I can get that sorted by next time I go away. Until then, thank you for being here with me.